Okay, so today we are looking at the Colmer Instacol High Gloss Gilding System. A bit of a mouthful. It uh, comes as two things. It's the base and then an activator. The base comes as a clear or as a yellow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use this on this wing. And what I want to do is compare it to the wing from the last video, link in the description, water gilding on a budget, where we water gilded and burnished this. So I've made this in exactly the same way as this. I want a fair comparison. So it's a compo wing out of a mold. I've gessoed it, sanded it. I've put a yellow base layer of bowl on there and then a red. Now the only difference is I've sealed this with button polish because um, I'm going to be oiling some of this. This will go on porous or non-porous, but what they're recommending for porous surfaces it, the, is that you put a really thin layer of this on, let that dry, and then come along and put your proper layer on. I'm not gonna do that because I want to oil gild part of this, so I've already sealed this to make this non-porous. So this is really perfect for non-porous. So um, enough talking, what we're going to do is just get on and show you exactly how to do this. Right, to start with, Colner recommend using one of their brushes. It's a synthetic brush, it's really soft, um, it comes in various sizes, so if you were doing a big area you would have um, a, a bigger brush, that's um, a number 20. Um, I'm going to use this one. It's really soft, about an inch long. Um, I can't really see why you couldn't just use a normal sort of craft synthetic brush. It's slightly stiffer, but they recommend their product because, of course, they do. Right, so this is the base. I'm just totally used to shaking up my oil size and I'm just doing the same. I think you do have to if you're using the yellow because I think the, um, the colouring in there will separate and go to the bottom. So if you're using the yellow one, which is, is actually great if you're gilding anything that's sort of white or light coloured because you can see where you've been. Um, so that is a really, a really good one, but I'm just, I'm using this because, um, because I've got it. If you're used to oil gilding, you're going to find this difficult like me um, because you have to put this on really thick to avoid the brush strokes. And when you're oil gilding, you put it on really thin. So I think a novice gilder will find this much easier than people who actually gild. Right, so the idea is you paint this on thickly, trying to avoid brush strokes. It's meant to sort of flow. The problem is, unlike oil size, it dries fairly quickly. This will be dry in about an hour and you want it to dry. This whole system of gilding is designed to dry off I think I might be overworking this, but I'm just trying to... The problem is if you get brush strokes in there, they're going to set in there. And then when you come along and put your gold on, you're going to see the brush strokes. So I think like oil gilding, I don't think you want it to pull. So it's pulling in these edges of the feathers here. You want an even coat. Right, so what I'm doing, I'm doing these long feathers here and then I'm going to do this top edge to match the other wing. Then I'm going to oil gild all that. So if you feel this is thick, and I'm not really sure if it's a new product to you, I'm not really sure how you're meant to tell if it's too thick, but you can water it down a little bit. You can put a few drops of water in there. If it's an old pot or it's been open like this on a bench for a while, the water in it can evaporate, so they do recommend occasionally putting water in it. I can't tell if I'm doing this too thick or too thin. Well, I'm sure I'll find out when I come to gild it. This is um, really great on flat surfaces. I'm not really sure how good it is on 
decoration like this. Um, it can go outside. They've uh, gilded some sculptures over 30 years ago that are still fine outside. So I'm going to leave that to absolutely fully dry. We're not getting to um, a tack situation like we would with oil gilding. Absolutely bone dry. You could leave that for weeks, if not months. So I'm going to um, get on with some other work and then come back to this later. So this has had about four hours since I put it on. It was dry in about an, half an hour, so that's quite fast. So now I'm going to put the activator on. Uh, this doesn't need watering down, it's really, um, really liquid. These are all water soluble, so um, the brushes just get washed in water. Right, so this activates this. So you could leave this, as I said, like weeks and weeks, and then you could come along and put this on. You have to let this dry, then you've got about an hour's working time. So if you're gilding something big, only activate what you could possibly gild in an hour. You can reapply this, so if, it, if the gold starts to not stick, then this can go back on. So you can see the shine that's on here is basically the shine that you should get on your gilding. If this isn't shiny, then you're not going to get the shine on, on the gold. So I think I've got the right thickness on there because I've got that sort of nice high gloss shine. So I don't think this needs to be anywhere near as thick as the other one. And it's just brush it on. So if you miss anywhere, the gold isn't going to stick. There's a slight sort of milky film to this so you can sort of see where you've been. Right, so I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to check it in about 15-20 minutes. I think this is dry. There's a little squeak there but to touch it that's absolutely bone dry and that's actually what you want. The next product Colner sells you is the uh, what they call a tissue. Um, it feels like suede. It's got a, a logo in the middle here um, and these edges they're quite rough. I think they've been stamped or heated so that that there is really rough. I think you sort of fold this into like a, um, a pad. Then I'm using the uh, six carat white gold that we used on the other wing but I'm using transfer leaf. So transfer leaf just means it's on a um, piece of tissue paper. What you do is because there's no, there's no tack on that like there would be for oil size is you take your tissue, you place, I mean it's not, it's not sticking at all like it would with oil, and you take your tissue and you rub. So I'm going back over to try and fill some of these splits. This would be lovely if this was flat decoration, it would just go on in one lovely section. So you get the tissue, you can also have uh, one of these tools with rubberized ends and what that does is like here where I'm, I'm trying to get this into like a corner, it pushes it in. You just need a little tiny bit of pressure to get the gold to stick to this. Now on flat areas the tissue is great, on decoration you just need that extra help with this pointy tool and it's rubber so it's soft, it's not scratching anything. Wow, I've certainly created something awkward for myself haven't I? But it's taking way longer than it would if it was oil gilding.
So what you do now is I've got as much stuck on as I can get stuck on. Get your tissue, fold it into a, a nice pad. And it's a bit shiny in places, but overall sort of matte. And then rub it. I'm really sort of getting it all stuck in and getting rid of all the loose bits. There you go, but it is quite a mirror finish. Um, I've got leaf stuck everywhere where I don't want it to get stuck, so I'm just going to clean that off. I'm going to oil size that so that I get that matte gilding next to this. This is a three hour. So unlike the Colna, this goes on nice and thin. I'm trying to do this methodically because it is hard to see where you've been and where you've not been. Wow, that is really impressive. I am really shocked at how similar. If I didn't know that this one with the hole in is the water gilding one, I don't know if I could have tol told the difference. So yeah, water gilding, um, I would still do that on an antique because you need the ley lines and the ley line is when you put the gold leaf on and you put the next gold leaf on it overlaps and so you've got a double thickness and when that starts to wear away you see those lines and you need to see those on antiques but something um, like a sculpture or um, maybe a chandelier a light light fitting where you want to gild the metal uh, but you can't water gild because you can't get the gesso on there don't see why you can't use that really really impressed is a little bit fiddly um, and that's because I had a little bit of decoration. I would not be doing it on anything more detailed than this. These are only a few lines, but I was getting a little bit fed up and I'm known for having a, quite a lot of patience. But yeah, I'm impressed. I think you should have a go.